Hi, I'm Jay Thomas from Jay Thomas Auto, and uh, this is a special treat for you. I'm over at Roland Steel with Darren Labonte here, uh, and we're on Avenue C in Saskatoon. Darren, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, Jay. Thanks for coming in. So the reason why we're here is that I've got a wheel, a set of wheels, in fact, that need a little bit of work. Uh, this, this guy here, you can see, I'll show you a little closer in a second here, but uh, there's some scratches on the front of it and a little bit of curb rash around the edge of it, stuff like that. And that's what you guys do here, it's fix that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, wheels is what we do, so. Yeah, exactly. So whether it looks like this or it's a little bit bent, somebody hit a curb, something like that, big yeah. pothole, you get all that kind of stuff. You take care of all of it. Yeah, you betcha. Yeah, we've been doing it for three and a half years already. And yeah. So, yeah, it works good. Now, of course, besides that, you do some really cool custom stuff. So this is just this is just OEM stuff, but we'll take a look at in a second at, at all the cool stuff in the showroom here. But yeah you guys can take and resize the wheel or change the bolt pattern if you want or all yeah, kinds of stuff, right? We could do lots of different stuff like that. Uh, we really enjoy doing um, cool paint effects on stuff. Uh, the painter here has been experimenting and playing around a little bit, uh, getting ready for summer, trying to come up with what we want the new fad to be around Saskatoon, so. <laughs> Very cool. So we're gonna take you through a step-by-step -step guide of how exactly Darren and the crew here at Roland Steel actually fix a wheel. So where are we gonna begin? Oh, we'll start by taking the tire off with our Hunter Revolution tire machine and yep. we'll uh, get her all washed up and ready to go. And then once it gets to the paint department, we'll prep it up and get it ready to go. Very cool, here it comes. Okay, hey Darren, so we've got my set of wheels here. This is off my little 2012 Honda Fit. And you can see some of the damage that, you know, the previous owner kind of inflicted on these. They're not too bad, but you get to like that spot there and you get, yeah, some curb rash and stuff. We're gonna make that all go away, aren't we? Yeah, you bet. And the best part about it is getting it now before it gets any worse. The longer that it stays like that, the worse it gets. Water gets underneath the clear coat and starts corrosion happening, and then it becomes a lot more to repair than what it is now. Right. So, so first thing we're gonna do is let the air out. Yeah, we gotta let the air out of them all first. So our machine is different than a lot of other machines. It Look clamps the wheel by the center hole, not by the outer barrel of the wheel. So it, it lays down automatically and he's got foot pedals and then it picks it up for him so no breaking your back doing it. Yeah that was one of the big selling features of the machine. So, so this is a four bolt wheel. Of course so, we're not used to that in here are we? Doesn't happen a lot no. Nope. But the nice part again about this machine is is this machine is designed to not touch the wheel. So you've got there's tools on here I notice. And there's yeah. kind of a round disc and yeah, a tool and that kind of presses the bead, a couple other ones here. And the really cool thing, you guys will see it in a second. The best part about this machine is that it's designed to be a no touch machine. So it's designed to not touch, touch the, to be used and not touch the wheel. Well, the whole point of us coming here is to fix the wheel. So it doesn't, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't really help when we got to put a machine up against the wheel after you fix it, right? Well, that's the whole thing. And so you uh, basically set the machine where the valve stem is, accounting for a TPMS if it had one. I know this wheel doesn't. So you basically set the machine, tell it I want to demount the wheel. No, there's one underneath there too, right? Yeah, it breaks the bottom bead and the top bead. Now, the advantage of this type of bead breaking machine is it does not damage the inside part of the rim when it's breaking the beads. Those old school machines that had the shovel that smashes the bead away from the rim tended to scratch the wheel because no one ever used the plastic guard to protect it. So it scratches up the wheel and then you wind up with bead leaking problems down the road. Look at that, a little, little lip pulls it up and then it guards the wheel as it lifts it out. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, again, the idea is, is that it doesn't have to touch the wheel to take the tire off. The only thing that ever touches the wheel is the tire. And now I pulled it off the bottom too because yeah. that little 
that little guy came up and pushed the bottom out. Yeah. Holy cow. It's like just on its own. You're in control with your foot pedals down yeah, there. Yeah, my foot's the only thing doing anything at the moment. Wow. And then here's the wheel. Yeah. So now one of the things that we do is every wheel gets labeled to make sure that it goes back together in the same way that it came apart. So your tire actually has your name written on it. Right there. And it's written in that spot so that I know that that is the back of the tire. So that when I put it back on the rim, it's gonna go back on the rim this way. Right, exactly. Be because sometimes tires have white lettering and things like that on them and people want them a certain way. And sure. if I'm not the one that puts the tire back together, we need to know that it's gonna go back together. You the got right a way. system, perfect. Yeah. I know whose wheels they are, but it never hurts. So that's one. Now, the next step, I suppose, is that you're gonna clean them too here. Yeah, so, so the next thing we do is we clean the wheel front, back, inside, outside. It's really important because we are a paint shop that it's clean before it goes into the prep area because things like tire shine, yep. um, brake dust, all those kinds of things, they contain material that's bad for paint. So we wanna make sure there isn't any silicone left over on the wheel and before we start prepping it. I'll say there probably is some right now. Oh yeah, I, use I, tire know, shine. I know you keep your vehicles very clean <laughs> and your tires are always very clean. So uh, the, the thing about tire shine is uh, like so much of it out there is silicone based. Yeah. Silicone and paint do not match. It's like oil and water. And uh, if you have silicone on your wheel and we start sanding it, yep. you grind it right into the paint and then it's never even worse. Nothing, nothing ever sticks then. Yeah. So the best thing we do is start right now we clean it front to back inside outside normally we would clean the mounting surface with a wire brush but the mounting surface is actually nice and clean on this wheel so we're not going to do it because there's no no sense in doing it now twice, you, can, so. you can see the other problem with this wheel is yeah. that it's all scratched up inside the, that's going to change too right because like normally when this get got painted from the factory it, it kind of did get some spray but it's not clear coat or anything on the inside no right? they from factory of course uh somebody somewhere decided that it was going to save the company money to not paint back the back of the wheel properly right so they don't so when we do it we always paint the back of the wheel partially for longevity of the front finish because if you don't have clear coat all the way through yeah you have an edge somewhere back here that doesn't have clear coat on it as a place for moisture to go and start creep, creep around to the front so we always clear coat the whole wheel yep. inside outside and everything to make sure that it's gonna last as long as possible now flip it back around for me for one second because you also said the the surface why do you clean the surface oh well this is so this is the number one reason why aluminum wheels fall off of cars. <laughs> okay. So what happens is you get moisture gets in here and it corrodes this surface. There's a very small amount. It's, it's very, very super minor. Like I, I never worry about that much, but sometimes we get wheels in here that look very, very bad. So this one's not, this one's not, not that bad, but, but you can you see, can it's a see that worse. there's yeah. more corrosion. Yeah. What happens is over time that builds up and builds up and builds up and it actually gets quite thick. So you put that on your car and you tighten your wheels and torque them. Yep. And then you drive for a little while. What happens is, is that you're not actually tight because you're against all that corrosion. So the corrosion actually turns to powder and falls out. And oh. now your wheel isn't even close to being torqued correctly. No. So, so then you drive down the road and your wheel falls off. Yeah, because the lug nuts just back off because they're, they they're not tight. That's why tire shops will tell you to come back in in a 50 or 100 K to have your wheels retorqued is to make up for the fact that all that corrosion has now fallen out. Right. But if we can get that off first here at Roland Steel, we just remove it to start with. And then that way there is no problem. Ideally, you should not have to come back to get your wheels retorqued. Yep. If everything is clean and torqued correctly, when it's put together, it should be done. A car, car lot never asks you to come back and have your wheels retorqued on a brand new car. Because there's no corrosion. Because there's no corrosion. It's brand new. Brand new. Exactly. Okay. So that's going to be one right there. Okay. So you got two buckets of stuff here that we're going to use to kind of clean the wheel up. 
Yeah, one is a is a solution that works really well. It kills things like silicone. It completely removes it, uh, which is really important. Uh, and the other one, actually, believe it or not, is just plain old sunlight dish detergent. And one of the reasons why we like it is because it doesn't leave a residue behind when you're done rinsing it off. Right, okay. So that's the big reason why we use it. And I suggest to anybody who washes their wheels at home that that's what they should use to wash their wheels because it doesn't leave a bunch of crap on their wheels when mm, they're done. That's a good idea. Yeah. Now, I guess this this wheel, like, these are my summer wheels, so they're pretty clean. Cause yeah, always, they are very clean. I always tidy them up a little bit, but I noticed there's some sticky goo on the bottom left over for some old balancing, you know, stuff yeah. there. Yeah, we're going to remove all of that because when we repaint the back of the wheel, we're going to make it all nice and new, and then we're going to paint the wheel weights to match the back of the wheel color oh, so wow. that when they're on there, you won't pretty much see them. But this is a very common thing we see. You can always tell if a person has gone through lots of sets of tires because most shops do not remove the glue. They take the weight off and leave the glue there or the tape yeah. there. Yeah. And the problem is trying to get it off without scratching the surface. And it's very difficult to do. We have lots of different kinds of tools that we try to use, but most of the time on a wheel like this, that doesn't have much protection for the paint, like there's no clear coat on here. Yep. It's just about impossible to get it off without scratching. I mean, we can try but you're gonna be here for hours trying to do it. I can use a metal one and it'll work faster. Yeah. But there's always, you always run the risk of scratching the wheel. Exactly, now in our case, it doesn't matter right now. It doesn't we're... matter as much for us because we're gonna be repainting, but we also don't wanna do any more damage to the wheel than we have to sure. because it just means more damage we have to fix later. Yep. So we always try very, very hard to, to not damage a wheel when we're, when we're cleaning it uh, because we don't always repaint a wheel when we're when we have it come through the shop if this wheel was only had a bend in it we're still going to clean all that glue off so that when the we rebalance it because it seems like if you don't clean the glue off nine times out of ten when you balance it that's where it wants you to put the sticky weight <laughs> and it won't stick to that old glue so you got to clean it off anyway <laughs> that's right. so we just uh so we just take it off to to do that so it gets probably 80 to 90 percent removed in the wash bay and then the painter when he starts prepping it, he'll uh, remove it the rest of the way. So this area of the, of the wheel is really important as well. And lots of times that's a part that doesn't really ever get looked at. This is an area of the wheel that other tire machines usually damages. Yep. And then that causes the issue with, um, with leaking tires. With the bead not. Yeah, you get a scratch. See, this is all painted and protected right now. Yep. And those old school bead shovel, bead shovel, bead breakers will come in and they go, they go in and then they go bang across the face and they scratch all this up. Well, now that's just an open aluminum area that can corrode, yes. which is usually what ends up happening. And chrome wheels, when it damages the chrome, it gets really, then the corrosion gets really bad. I don't know, chrome is one of those things that it doesn't like to be damaged. As soon as it is, you have nothing but trouble, so. Really? So yeah, so we make sure that it's nice and clean. And then every wheel that comes through the shop gets checked to make sure that it's like, one of the things we're also doing when we're washing is we're looking at the lug nut holes. We're making sure that they're round like they're supposed to be. This wheel has steel inserts in it from factory. We're making sure that they're all there because I have had them come through where there'll be one or two missing. Yep. So make sure they're all there. Um, you know, we're just, I'm, me, uh, for me, I'm looking at it to see, oh yeah, look, there's some damage around the center hole from when it got balanced at one time. Somebody rammed the cone into it. Yeah. So we're going to make sure that we fix all that when we do the, do the repainting. Um, and when we rebalance, our machine doesn't ever cone from the front. Okay. It cones by the lug nut holes so that you don't have that damage. That's right. Yeah. So this is very, very common. I see it lots on wheels and it's usually a technician just not quite looking where he's putting that cone in and he bangs it against the face of the wheel before he puts it into the hole so just kind of being sloppy yeah and and, and you know like sometimes and, and a lot of times it's not really no fault of their own except for that they were never taught the correct way to do it so so then every wheel gets checked for straightness so we have this machine this is an old wheel balancer that we've modified to a really old balancer. This is this and there's is, the cone you're talking about. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what does damage. So if the guy's not careful with it, so this is a very, very old tire machine. It's not even a standard size shaft on it. It's so old, 
They were standardized, I think, in the 80s. So it's ancient. So it's, it's really old. So first thing I do is spin it by hand and I'm looking to make sure that it's straight. There's no bends because it can't go through our CNC machining process if it's bent. So we have to make sure it's straight. This one is nice and straight. It hops up and down a little bit, but that's the center hole doing that, not because the wheel. Because it's not centered. Because the center Perfectly. hole is not centered and that's very common. Yeah, because it's just a wedge shaped thing. Yeah. So I like to spin it at speed. And then we are gonna clean off all of this because we're gonna be repainting these wheels. We're gonna clean off all of the crud that's on the bead area of the wheel. We want to make sure that when it's all done and we put the tires back on that there's no uh, no problem with the beads leaking later. Right. Because that's a pain in the butt. So that one spins up nice. Yeah, this one's very nice. I'm sure they probably all will be. But uh, well, I, I can't say I can complain of anything being wobbly or bumpy when I'm yeah, driving it. So this is not a hot. It, that's a pretty low profile tire on this car. You would feel it if you had a bent rim. Exactly. Uh, it's not something that, that would be disguised very easily. So from here, we'll go to the paint prep department. Okay. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll get prepping on it and start sanding out the rock chips and getting it ready for uh, paint. And I guess we'll get the other three ready to go too. Yeah, you betcha. Okay, Darren, on to the next step. So we're here to paint prep. We got Terry with us, who is your expert painter. Hey, Terry. That's me. <laughs> and uh, you know, Terry does all the all the spraying in here. But so walk us through, Darren, what what Terry's doing here with with this wheel. With my so wheel. first thing we did was is he cleans the wheel really well with another cleaner. So it actually got cleaned again after it was washed in the wash bay. Right. To make sure there's no more tar on it, things like that, because you know you can't get it all off in the wash bay. So cleaned off all the, all the tar and everything and. Now he's going through and he's inspecting the wheel and prepping it. And basically you just go pocket by pocket. And if there's a rock chip, he'll sand it out. And if there's a, um, you know, if there's a gouge or something like that, he'll clean it out, smooth it out so that when we apply new paint, it'll, it won't look like it was ever there. So now in this case, because this wheel is in fairly good shape, it's just the sort of the edge, the bright finish yeah. that's got some issues. The most of the pockets are pretty good. We're just basically scuffing with this. Yeah and then the, it'll get new paint put on top, but some wheels you have to actually strip right down to nothing, right? Yeah, yeah, so this, like your, your wheels are in such good condition that we don't need to go that extreme. Um, this is basically the same thing as if we, we were gonna blend into a fender on a car. You don't sand that fender completely back down to bare metal. Right. There's no need to do that. The product that's already on there is on there and it's in good condition. You just basically prepping it so you can blend a color and re-clear coat the wheel, which is exactly what we're doing here. Uh, there, we, there are times we get wheels in where the pockets are in such bad condition that we will have to strip them. And for that, we would put the wheel into a big tank that we have that has basically paint stripper in it. And it strips all the paint off back down to the aluminum. And then when we can start from scratch, um, we do that on lots of times if the wheel has like lots of paint on it, like much more paint on it than it's supposed to have, uh, <laughs> okay, which yeah. does happen. Yeah. Um, if they've been re refinished once or twice by other people, sometimes the paint gets pretty thick on there. And, and for our own warranty sake, if the paint has, if this is factory paint, yep. I don't feel concerned at all about painting over top of factory paint. But if this wheel had been painted a couple times by other shops anywhere in the world, it becomes a warranty issue for us. Yeah. So, because I don't know if they did the prep work properly before they put their paint on. So we take all the paint off and start over. Right. But in this particular case, I know this is factory paint and it's in good condition. So we're just gonna go from there. So, right. So we are gonna re-spray re the gray. Yeah, we're gonna touch up the color where we need to. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna do what we can. The, the center caps don't quite match the fact, the color on the wheel, they're, um, it's hard to see in this light, but they actually have a little bit of a red tinge to them in comparison. So it's actually kind of a green red, but what we'll do is we'll find a color, find the color that most closely matches the cap. And yep. then when we color the wheel, we'll make sure we color the area where the cap snaps in so that when it snaps in, it actually looks like it matches right. properly. Right. Now I so see what these caps actually don't all match each other either. 
If you, if you, the camera probably doesn't pick it up, but I can actually see that two look darker than the other two. <laughs> but and that's not uncommon. Uh, the ca center caps are almost never made in the same place the wheel is. That's right. So that you know, they're those people are told the the paint code they used for this wheel, and then they mix it in a big amount and it is what it is and there's lots of times that center caps don't match so then we're also going to open this thing up terry flip it over and and because the, the barrel gets some attention too right yeah yeah well you're going to sand the barrels and sand out the scratches so that we can apply some new color back there oh yeah right says so because this one this one's not too bad but you can see some some scratches up there and over there some of the other wheels are actually quite a bit worse than this one yeah this one's actually in pretty good condition So one of the next steps now we've got, Darren, we've got the wheels prepped for paint, and Terry's done that, is we got to figure out some colors, right? Now, in yeah. my case, my there are, you know, car, cars that have wheels that are just bright face, right? That, that's yeah. all they are, Yeah. right? So there wouldn't be a lot of painting involved. But in this case, the wheels that, that I've got have sort of gray pockets and a gray barrel to it, right? Yeah. So, so normally what we would do in this case is we would match the color to the wheel before we prep it. But because the center caps actually from factory didn't match the wheels to start with, yep. what we're going to do is we're going to try to find a color that matches the cap so that when we spray the wheel, then the wheel's actually going to match the cap. The reason why we're not just going to paint the cap is because the caps on these have a painted Honda symbol on them. Right. So for us to redo that requires getting a stencil made and all those kinds of things. Yep. So this is actually, caps are in really good condition, so we're gonna scuff the caps and re-clear coat them when we clear coat the wheels, but we're not gonna put any color on them. So we're gonna match the color to the cap, so when we spray the wheel, the wheel matches the cap, so when we snap them in, they look like they're the same color. Perfect. Because they are very obviously not the same color now. <laughs> um, that's just one of those things. The cap's probably made two countries away from where the wheels were made, yep. and that's how, that's just the nature of it. it ha it's very common. Not just um, this car, lots yeah, of cars. Yeah, lots of cars. And it's not just one make, make or model. It's like, I've seen different caps, color caps on the same car. Yes. It's just, it just depends on where they're made and the situation involved. So, so Terry's over here, you got a color book. Yeah, so we got a big color book with our paint system and he's going through and trying to find, find a color that matches. The, with grays, grays are some of the hardest ones. People don't realize with wheels, there's almost never a paint code. There's no paint, like when you get your car painted, there's a paint code on your car. Yeah. The shop can go to that paint code. They can take that, get the paint code off of the information from your car, take it to their computer, punch it in, and they have a starting point. Yes. Lots of times that code in its normal state isn't the right color. They have to use an alternate or tint the color to make it work, but they have a starting point. With wheels, you don't have a starting point because there's no code on the wheel anywhere. There's no. very few wheels out there that actually have, there's a few BMWs that actually have, might have the color actually stamped on the back of the wheel. Okay. It's very, very uncommon. So you have to have a book like we have that has million colors in it. Yeah. And you have to go page by page until you get the right, get in the right family. And then from there, narrow it down, down to to what you need. What you actually need, yeah. And sometimes what ends up happening is you find a color that's the right color, but maybe the metallics are wrong. Yeah. They're okay. not coarse enough, they're too, or they're not fine enough. But at least if you have the color correct, changing the metallics is the easy part. So Terry, did you find one that you think figure fits? I think we got a winner. Yeah? Oh, wow. So, yeah. yeah, that's like, you know, it's yeah, it hard looks, to pick it up on the camera, but yeah. pretty awfully close. Yeah, you know, it's very close. Metallics are a little finer. You always have to remember too that a paint chip is not ever 100% accurate. Like with that one? Yeah. yeah. See how it's much brighter? This is brighter, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Purple's out, yeah, yeah that's purple's right. Purple's out. So I would probably say that that one with, will probably be good because again, a color chip does not show, doesn't give you a real 
100% accurate yep. version of the color. It just gives you a, okay, well, it's that kind of metallic. It's that shade of gray. It has that, you know, red hue in it, or, or it has a little bit of a blue flop to it or whatever the case may be. So cool. Okay. So we're next at the, the big fancy machine. Now we're just going to get things set up for these wheels. This, this wheel is prepped and it's ready for paint, but we're actually going to do the cutting after the paint is all finished, right? Yes. So we're just going to write the program right now. Um, so walk me through what this machine actually is. Like, so this machine is, well, it's, it's a couple years old now, but it's one of the most, it's probably the most advanced wheel refinishing machine in the province. Um, it, <laughs> to be quite honest, does most of the work for you. It's pretty nice. Um, what this machine is designed to do is it's designed to reproduce this machine surface that's on the face of the wheel with all these little lines and this rainbowy look that it has. That's what this machine is designed to do. So this machine will write the program and then to follow the profile of the wheel and then it will machine it. Wow. So, so you basically teach it what the profile is. You, sh you show it the outside and then as it follows the profile, as it works its way to the center, yes. right? Yeah. Where it, where it ends, ends up. Yeah. And you program it in and then you can basically cut, cut layers out of it as you go. Right? Yeah, we're, we're taking like two thousandths of an inch at a time. You want to take as little material off the wheel as you can to get your achieved look. Right. Because you don't want to machine the wheel away until there's nothing left. Because <laughs> you could. You could just keep machining until the wheel was, was well, scrap. Yeah, look at, look at the mean, piles of, yeah. of so, aluminum in here, right? Yeah, so you could very easily machine it until the wheel wasn't safe. <laughs> so there is a line. Like, there's only so many times you can machine a wheel. We're very, very conscious of that. Yeah. So we make sure that when, we, when we're machining anything, we're taking off the bare minimum all the time yep. so that we can keep the wheel what it's supposed to be. Because some wheels... The more you machine them, they actually change because the way the wheel is designed, yeah. as you machine it, the spokes get thicker or they get thinner yeah. uh, just on the face because of the way the pocket is designed. So exactly. these wheels aren't going to change much because we're not taking very much. They're in pretty good condition. We're going to be taking maybe, maybe five thousandths of an inch off of them in total. So gotcha. it's not going to be very much. Okay. So, so when we set the machine up, we're setting it up to do, uh, to do the programming now. This is going to... Uh, read the face of the wheel and it then it's gonna map it out. So when, when, when we do it here, we always assign the, the file a number. So the numbers we get are out of a Hollander book, which looks similar to this guy right here. This is a bit of an older one. This is an older one, but this is a, this is a Hollander book. So and it shows you every wheel for yeah. like every car in the years that, yeah, in you the, know. Pretty much anything made in the USA, or North America is in here and it, these guys have assigned each wheel a number and that number is a whole number actually all automotive parts are like that right so this wheel has a owner number so when we when we program something in the owner number is 64033 so the reason why we do that and then we can take a picture of it to make sure that we can cross-reference the fact that that number coincides with that wheel so i could get that book out look in the picture in the book with that honer number and cross reference it to make sure right that's to make sure that when you machine the wheel you're actually machining you have the right program loaded into the machine yeah because so, if you didn't you could just cut you could destroy a wheel very fast yeah because right. uh, it, the machine doesn't know that you don't have the right wheel in there it just knows <laughs> that you picked the program and and it's not that smart no it's still only as smart as the operator so once we're ready to do the programming I have to set some parameters for the programming. So lead in is the start point for it to begin its, uh, the program. The start point is the actual cutting start point. Yep. The end point is the cutting end point. The lead off is the, is the, the portion of the program where when it's done cutting, it goes away from the wheel to a safe distance before it rapids home. Okay. Yep. So, and then this, the clear point is the clear point where it goes to get out of the way so that you can take the wheel out of the machine. Without hitting the machine. Without hitting the machine. Exactly. So okay. the first thing you said is the lead in point. So the lead in point, I like to have the lead in point um, a little bit away from the wheel. 
you can see there, it's just, maybe that's an eighth of an inch, Yeah. you know? It's Cause it's gonna rapid move to that point. Right. So, you know, when I first started programming with the machine, I probably had it triple the amount distance away because <laughs> it's rapid moving to that point and it, if, it's, if, it's you're not used, if you're not used to it, it can kind of catch you off guard because it goes flies, it flies towards the wheel and then all of a sudden it stops. So the start point now, so that's now that that's set, I'm going to set the starting point. So the starting point is where I want it to actually start cutting. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to put this thing, I want it to have that little. So when it goes lip. red like that, it means it's contact. That it? means it's having, it has, it has made contact with the wheel. So once you're just using your up and down controls Yeah, up there. and down cool. controls. So once you have that touching the wheel, then I always move it up just a little bit. Otherwise it doesn't. And I suppose in this case, the profile, the side profile of this wheel, it's flat or it's vertical, I should say. Yeah. Then it's on about a 45 for a little bit. Yeah. And then there's a top edge, right? Yeah, there's actually a small little flat area here. Yeah. Then then it goes downhill and it goes in a swoop in yeah. a swooping motion goes up. So we want to retain all those little features because it's one of the things that gives the wheel the look that it has. Sure. So now that we've got that, we have we have our starting point. Now I have to pick our end point. So now I'm going to go, so we know it's going to map all of this middle part, middle portion. Now I programmed wheels by hand for many, many, many years. This is far faster, more efficient and more precise. You can do it by hand, but you then you have the, the human element in there yeah. that can make a mistake. So that's the end point. So this is the end just, point. Let me get in there and yeah. it's just the very edge of that right machine on the surface. Edge. So I've picked my end point. Now my lead off point is just gonna be so like your lead like your lead end point. Yeah, I'm gonna move out. it. I want it to go to about there, and then it's gonna go rapid move home. So, so then how does it map out the actual profile? Is it do, it do it while it's in action? Yeah, you'll see it. You're gonna see it right away. Okay, so now, now we're gonna set it up. So now it's all ready to go. So now it's gonna map this wheel. So it's gonna come down. It's just taking little tiny itty every, bitty chunks. Every time that light lights, that's a measurement. My God, it's so precise. Well, and that's one of the things about it, the machine doing it over a human doing it is, again, I programmed this for lots of years and sometimes you'd want to try to get things done faster and you, you know, you skip this or you, you, you make your distance in between your points a little bit bigger, which, you know, to the naked eye, most of the time you wouldn't see the difference, but it can make the wheel well, look different. You can you can see on this wheel, now that I'm zoomed in with the, with the video, that it's a big curve, yeah. right? like it's almost to the bottom of that curve. Yeah. When you look at them just from the side of the car, you'd think that it was a flat surface. It's not at all. No, it's, it's not. Got a big, it's got a big scoop as it gets towards the outside of the spokes. They're actually the only real flat spot on this whole wheel is this little tiny little spot right at the start. Yeah. It actually swoops down and then swoops up and it's curved all the way to the end. It's actually not flat at all. So it's, it's taking, like it must move over half a millimeter. Maybe a, maybe one millimeter, you know. It's, it goes. It's. I think it is set to take uh, every four thousandths of an inch. It takes a point. It's taking a point, and you can see yeah. up here. It's flashing because it's making contact. So it's registering from the outside all the way in what that profile, that vertical horizontal profile is. Yeah, yeah. It moves on. This is what's called a two-axis CNC. So it moves on two planes. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So this thing basically chugs along now and it's mapping things out. You can see over here, it's just counting along. Yeah. And you can see that it's moving because it's going now uphill, it's moving on both axes. If it was going in a straight line, only one axis would be moving. Right. But because it's moving on two axes and that's where this type of machine is crucial to have in this type of uh, what we do here, because you could never manually move, the, move a manual lathe fluent enough no. Because a manual lathe is not designed to move that way, so it can't even move fluent enough to, to be able to do that by hand. You'd never be able to do that by hand. Wow. Uh, this machine, the motors that are in this machine and the servos that are in the machine are designed to move it at such small increments, but still be fluent. Because otherwise, it, if it was just moving from one point to the next, yeah. it would be choppy. 
you have lines. You just little you'd, step you'd, down yeah, lines. Yeah, you always have all these choppy lines because it's just going from point, 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 point. Yeah. Whereas this machine with the servos and everything, it's able to take all those points and draw a railroad map for the thing to follow. So it's nice and smooth. So it's smooth. Yeah, so, it's, so it makes that nice curved contour yeah. instead of just step down. Wow. Okay, so this thing is returned back to home, sitting yeah. over there. It's finished mapping everything out. So now we can go on the screen and we can actually look at the program that it just wrote. So there's the program. Shows our start point. It shows the swoop at the beginning of the spoke and it shows, you can very easily see that it's not flat in any way. No. So except for that very, very, very beginning. Um, so when I when we go into the screen, get ready to cut, we would have options to adjust the program if we wanted to. Yep. If, we, if we didn't like something the way that it looked, we could change it around a little bit. But mm, nine times out of ten, I don't have to do that. And it maps it pretty pretty accurately right this, from the start. This looks good to you, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks exactly like what I think the wheel should look like. You compare that side profile to that. We get right down here, side profile. Yeah, you know, she's pretty much the same. Yeah, like I can. I have I have a couple different tools here that I can take, and I can take this and I can look put it up against the screen and I can see that that looks pretty much pretty like close. it's supposed to. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. So now the next part the next part would be we would be ready to cut it. Exactly. So I guess off to paint next for the set of wheels. Yeah. And we bring them back here once the paint is ready and we we cut them all to make them look pretty again. Yeah. You bet. Okay, we're with Terry here in the, well, the system that tells us how much paint we need, right, Terry? Correct. Okay, so basically you've got that paint code. We looked it up. That's for the, for the right there. The magic number. The magic number. Make sure it's right. If it's not right, you're in trouble. <laughs> so they call it pewter gray. So that's that's the, the, the well, recipe there. Right? Those are the toners that are in the color, yeah. Black, medium satin aluminum fine satin aluminum, deep violet. Who would have thought that? That's what gives it that red redness when the light sure. hits it just right. Bright blue, white base coat binder and reducer. Cool. So then you take that and we go into the paint room. We do. Which in the shop here is just around the corner. Oh. Yeah. The cool thing is that actually just feeds right into the machine, your gun, right? Yeah. No double pouring or anything. Saves a lot of time. So there's like a filter that goes in there, right? That's yep. what's in the bottom of that thing. Cool. Make sure no clumpy paint. Then you would grab things like this and they're like ready to pour, basically. You yep. put it back onto that scale over there and you measure out how much you, of the formula you need for each of them, right? Exactly. Cool. Okay, Darren, so here we are in the paint booth and we've already had Terry in here doing some work on the wheels. So there's kind of a sealer on these now. Yeah, yeah, we put a sealer on there before we put a base coat on. Whenever we're doing over top of an old paint product, the sealer is designed to be the bridge between the two. Okay. Between the old product and the new product. Prevents any reaction or anything like that. And Right, makes yeah. the makes the paint stick. Yeah. And then yeah. also Terry was telling me also, you know, fills in it all, you know, little micro scratches, things yeah. like that, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then that way when we put the new color on, it's going to look uh, like it should. Yeah. A perfect finish. For sure. Yeah. Now just under here too, we're even getting the inside of these things painted. So I know he already had the inside of the barrels yeah. painted up and, pr and primed up, I should say, with a sealer. So I guess next step. As the paint comes in and yeah, we, we'll we put some paint in the gun and we'll uh, get some color on them and then we'll uh, get machining them. Excellent. On to the next step. Okay. Okay, Darren, it's the most exciting step. This is when we actually get to take the wheel and make it look like it used to look. Yeah. And it was brand new, right? So it's all painted. 
And like, you could actually leave a wheel just painted, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, we paint wheels like that all the time. Just spray them, right? Some of them came from the factory, but this one has a bright machine face that's in these top surfaces and then the pockets stay gray. Yeah. So we're gonna cut it with this fancy machine. Now, we just had a look before on like how you actually set this thing up so it's got the right profile. That's all programmed in and now it's time to cut. And we've done a little tiny dry run here so the edge has just got a little rub on it because you had to do a sort of setup. Yeah, you always have to, each wheel has to be kind of set up uh, to start the cut. But basically, here we go. The doors are shut. Darren runs the controls. Make sure. And we that. start cutting it. This is exciting. So here we go, wheels are spinning up high speed. We start to see some action. Wow, you can actually watch the like the bright machine part just come right back onto the wheel. You can see it. Yeah, yeah, as it removes the paint, you can see the difference. And it gives you a good indication of what the wheel looks like when you're driving down the street. Yeah, I guess that's how it's gonna be when it's spinning, right? Yeah. Now every wheel's a little bit different, right? Like we're cutting it and it's not cutting everything right off right off the hop. Yeah. So when they get made, they're not exactly all perfect. No, sometimes, you know, like when a wheel goes into the machine to do the machining process, there could be a little piece of material that gets caught between the jaw and the wheel and throws that wheel off. It only has to be a couple thousandths of an inch. And then you put it into a machine where there isn't anything blop in the way, and yeah. now your wheel is out that little bit. So. Sure, sure. So once it moves over and shuttles over, we can see that, yeah, it, it machines some of the spokes, like that one, but not towards the middle. Yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure that when we wrote the program, we actually wrote it to one of the other wheels. So uh, that wheel just happens to be just a little bit different than the other ones. It's not gonna matter because once we cut enough layers off of this thing, it's yeah. all gonna be the same. Yeah, once we've cut it a few times, it'll all go back. Now, people always think we're machining a lot off the wheel, but when you think about the thickness of paint is, is you know, only a couple thousandths of an inch. Yeah. Like it's a piece of paper. Or even so, less. So yeah. when you think about, this is old clear coat here, the white, and then this is the gray sealer we put on. And then this is the color we put on. So when you think about that, it's able to cut this and leave that transition shows how little it's actually taking off. Yeah, exactly. So I guess we run it again. And yeah, this, we'll this one doesn't have a lot of curb rash, but we keep going basically. Yeah, like this one's got a, had a little spot I saw, but I actually think it got it all, all already, so. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so we're going for pass number two. Okay, pass number two. We're going to see some more action this, here. We should see a lot more action this time. And she's just about to make contact right about now. Okay, Darren, so you've pulled the bit off and we're swapping now. That's a regular steel carbide bit you had before, right? Yeah. And yeah. this is a diamond tip bit. Yes, so the idea behind this is it leaves a much nicer finish on the wheel. It um, already looks pretty nice. Yeah, the, but, so that, that's what we would consider a standard finish. Yep. Yeah. Um, this is called a diamond finish that we're gonna give the wheel. Cool. It would be an extra cost, but it's if you're a person that's really want your wheels to look that much better. It's amazing what it does. Awesome. Um, and it's purely just the, 
the, the material that's removing the metal, this very edge of this tip has got a diamond on it. Yep. It's very small, but the way it removes the material is different than a normal carbide bit, and that's how it leaves the finish it leaves. And there's just one little patch left to basically get through the in the center there, and then we're yeah. then and we're that, there. And that is actually the old clear coat still left right. on there. And if we spin it now. All of the yeah, all the curb rash, curb is, rash gone. is all gone on the outside edge of this thing, which is pretty exciting. Okay. So a diamond bit is louder when it cuts because of the shape of the tip of the bit. Yep. It will be louder. It will have a different sound to it. It all, the shavings that it leaves are totally different just because it's a totally different. Cool. Shape. That's pretty neat though. Yeah, you can see it get brighter. Yeah. As yeah, you, you, can, as you watch it, you, you can, can see really that see the that line in there and it's it's kind of there and it's moving up. Yeah. But it just completely changes the way that it actually the spokes look invisible now. Yep. They're when reflecting it's spinning. so much light when they're spinning, it almost looks like they're not there. Almost yeah, like a solid, like a Yeah. driving at highway speed it will look like your caliper is floating in the air because they won't look like there's any center part of the wheel. That's great. So you can see the difference. Whoa look at that. Look at the mirror finish. That's crazy. Actually, it's good to go. And it is, the center's yeah. all done now. Yeah, it's yeah. All good, nice crisp lines. All that right. looks amazing. Yeah, we're gonna just prep the ed the, ed the very edge of it here. We'll prep that for paint and then it'll be good to go. And it's time to clear coat it yeah. after this. And I guess we gotta do the rest of the wheels too, yeah. but you know. <laughs> okay, we got this thing out of here. There's some dust on it just from flying around, but wow, look at that. No curb rash. Perfect finish. It's so reflective. Like it's so. Yeah, it's it's almost looks polished to, to a point. Amazing. Look at that. We'll get it blown off and in the booth, and we'll do the other three. Okay, Darren. So we're back in the paint booth here because we got the wheels all machined and ready to go. Look at that. They're looking amazing. Yeah, now we'll uh, we'll put some clear coat on them so that they stay looking this nice for a long time. Some guys do leave aluminum bare, but it doesn't get stay very well protected, does it? No, the problem with aluminum is, is that it doesn't like the elements and it especially doesn't like moisture. So if you leave it raw, the problem is, is that it will eventually oxidize and right. it loses its shine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear them and then they're gonna sit for a little while because the, the paint layers, the primer and the paint, the base coat, coat don't take long to dry. It's the clear, right? Yeah, well, the clear coat will be dry in a couple days, but uh, the you want it to be as cured as possible before you start putting tires and stuff on. Um, you don't wanna stress the clear coat out before it's had a chance to really bond to, to the surface. Right, and seal in and then we can put the wheels on. So we're gonna come back in another week. These are gonna be all clear coated and we'll check out how the tires go on. Yeah. You betcha. Okay, Darren, so I'm back. It's a week later after we got the uh, wheels all painted up. They're looking great. And it is time to get the wheels and the tires married back together again. This is this is awesome. Look look at how amazing they turned out. Like they are just, oh, I'm, yeah, so, ex I'm so excited. Diamond cut finish is definitely a step up from the normal one. So this is the machine we're gonna use. It's called what, a Hunter? This is a Hunter Revolution. Revolution. This is one of their more, most advanced machines they have. Now, we used it to sort of take the wheels and the tires apart. Yes, we did. But now it really gets to shine because this is where it's so good at what it does. So you flip the, in fact, this thing will even flip over automatically and pick a wheel up off the ground. Yeah. If it's loaded, right? And yes. it's heavy. In our case, they're pretty, pretty yeah, light. Yeah, these are pretty light. It's really so, not necessary, but I could, but I can tilt this. Oh, hang on. 
So I can tilt this thing. Look at that. So it'll, you can just basically slide a tire on, a wheel yeah. on, and it'll pick it up for you instead of having to break your back. Yeah, it doing really it. helps with big truck, truck wheels and stuff like that. Right. Because otherwise a guy does eight of those in a day and then you're pretty tired. So. Yeah. So it's controlled by pedals. It's hydraulically, hydraulically or air driven? It's uh, both. It's, uh, both. it's got some hydraulics, uh, a hydraulic system on it as well as uh, air system. So it's an air system that clamps it, clamps the wheel in place. Cool. And then uh, the hydraulic system is what works all the arms. So we're putting the valve stem in right now. Yeah. Sweet. So that goes in. So one thing we never do is use the, <laughs> we, we never do this. We never screw this thing on. And then the idea behind this thing is that you're supposed to screw it on the valve stem and then you put it against the rim and you- Give it a good. Give it a good push down and it pulls it through. Well, we don't do that here because <laughs> just wrecks it the just rim. usually wrecks things. So I couldn't believe they used to like used to be able to buy ones that were metal. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You can imagine the damage they did. I've fixed lots of damage like that. So this thing, you're just getting it lined up so that it's. So normally if we were dismounting the tire for refinish, we would have this thing really close, but because we're putting fresh wheels together. We're actually setting it a little further away than it would normally be. And you're using a little joystick over yeah, here. Yeah, there's joysticks and stuff like that to make it work. But I do that because what I don't, what I want is for the machine to actually be touchless. Because right. there really isn't a completely touchless machine. But, but this machine close. is very close. The only thing that ever really touches the rim is this. But when it's a fresh wheel, I don't want anything touching the rim. No, so right. the only thing that's gonna end up touching the rim is the tire. And well, and, <laughs> nothing uh, you can do about that. <laughs> a little bit of, yeah. There's not much you can do about the tire touching the rim. It has to, so. So we're gonna probably put these on. We can see which side was on the front, which was the back before, so we'll. Yeah, normally you can tell because one side's dirtier than the other. Right, that's but also nice black. that's why we write, we write the information in a certain spot on the tire so that we can, we know, we make sure that we go, it goes on the right way. So they've had about a week to cure these these wheels, so yeah. the clear coat's gonna be all nice and solid on them. Yeah, yeah, I'm not worried about them at all. So that feeds it on, gets the bead underneath. Now we're gonna go, we don't need to do it with these wheels, but we're gonna do it for the sake of the video. We're gonna use the pusher arms. This is one of the things that I like about this machine. That guy comes down, wedges in. No tire bars. Nope. These There's guys no push metal in. metal bars against the rim. Wow. Just snugs it all under. And the nice part about that is, is nothing touched the rim but the tire. No, it's just all that we got left on the, on the yeah. rim now is just some dirt and just some- a, Just a little bit of, um, typical stuff that happens, but it always wipes off. Wow. But that way, nothing touches the rim. There's no chance the rim is going to get damaged from the machine. Yep. You pretty, you have to try really hard to damage a wheel with this machine. <laughs> if you manage to damage a wheel with this machine, you're definitely trying. So tires on now, it's just a matter of yeah, no, blowing we'll it, up. Air it up and look at this. You can actually set the tire pressure target you want it to reach. Yeah. And it's just gonna fill, pop the bead, and then and then reduce the tire pressure back to what you have it set to. So some cars run 30 PSI, 29, 32, 35, yeah. 38, you know, whatever it, it seems calls like they're for. All over the map depending on what the manufacturer tire was. Tire pressure reached. This is super high tech. Wow. So then one of the things this machine also does is it's called a bead massage. So in a lot of shops you'll go to they talk about or they do um, where they will air the tire up and pop the beads on and then they will let all the air out of the tire to relax everything Yep. and then air it up again. Well, that takes extra time, but it's actually not that effective way, uh, that effective of a way to make sure that the tire has beaded on to the, to the rim properly. Okay. But this machine has a bead massage feature. So now what that's going to happen is bottom arm goes out. Is both arms are going to come down. Top one. While yeah. there's pressure in the tire, it's going to massage the beads to make sure that they have completely seated into the area where they're supposed to. Look at that. 
sometimes you can actually hear air escape. Yeah, I, I heard and, it when it just touched it, it kind of went. Pssst. Yeah, and when it does that, that's because it wasn't actually in the spot correctly. Oh. So that's it moving the rest of the way and sometimes some air escapes when that happens. That's why when we put it on the balancer, we always double check the air pressure. Right. To make sure that it's where it needs to be. So that releases the holder. That comes out. It's gonna be part of what we're doing next. Yeah. So. All right. So so one of the things we don't do is we never clamp by the face. Right. Of the wheel because again, it's now look at it, this. The wheel's basically brand new. Why would you want to? Again, don't have to pick up the wheel because that that hydraulic lift picks it up for you. You it just does, roll it on. Yeah, it does two things. It saves the guy's back, but it also allows me to be very precise sliding it onto the shaft. Right. So that we don't damage up the center hole of the wheel. We just spent all that time fixing it. Yeah, exactly. Because that's very common damage that we see. So it's basically mounts it there. We're going to check air pressure so once again. I'm setting these at 33. Yeah. Because I'm actually not 100% sure what your car's at. So I think that's pretty close to what it's yeah, supposed to I be. Yeah, I think it is. So what, the nice part is, is once you put them on, you can adjust from there. Sure. Uh, so yeah. So this is a what? So this is a Hunter Road Force elite balancer um, this one has a lot of features on it that are really cool uh, it will actually is can be precise enough to tell me even where to put the wheel on the vehicle for the best ride wow so um, right now we've checked the air pressure it's ready for a road force balance all we have to do is lower the lid we don't even have to enter any sizing of the rim of the tire anything it has lasers inside the hood that measure all those things wow so it's it's spinning right now right now it's did it's checking the balance and then it's going to lower that drum on there so now it's road forcing the tire it's it's discovering if the tire has any imperfections in it or heavy spots in it these tires are pretty little they shouldn't require a ton of weight and they shouldn't require a, shouldn't have a high road force so this is a little higher than I would prefer to see as a road force. Okay. Uh, being that it's 20, it's showing that it has some up and down movement. Yep. Um, the side to side is very good, which is what usually causes vibrations. So um, now I always like to can check. Because there sometimes what we can do with this is when we're getting something wrong, yeah. we can rotate the tire on the wheel. Yeah. And it, it, we can actually maybe eliminate some of that pop well, or yeah, whatever, well, right? Yeah, well, and sometimes by doing that as well is, is it eliminates the weight needed. So it's going to spin again. Yeah, I'm just checking it again. And it's going to go one more time. Okay, so now it's showing me a prediction of... 11 pounds 11 pounds which would be much better than, than the 19 on a small wheel like this and so what, what it's going to tell us is it's where to mark me. so it's actually this almost. in this particular case it's yep. telling me to turn it almost 180 degrees right so what we're going to do so look at this there's a laser line yeah so this it tells line. you exactly where to make the first mark it shows you even a yeah. little image of a hand yeah it says so make the first mark here we're mark that there and, and then, then it says servo and it says make the second line here, and this is on the rim in this so case. I make put a little, little mark on the rim, yep. which will rub off easily afterwards. So then we un basically take it off this machine, we go back to the first machine. There's more time involved with road force balancing, which is why it's usually more money than a standard balance. Right, because if that was a standard balance, you would have stopped basically right where we were. Yeah, we you would have just... thrown some weights on it, and that would have been it. Yeah, and, and it would have been probably 80 percent okay but, but we don't do that here we try really hard to get to get wheels to get into that 90 to 100 percent well and you know you and i have talked before these are kind of small wheels with pretty pretty fairly side small uh, sidewalls small yeah. sidewalls big old cars big tires big wheels didn't notice stuff, stuff like that as much but modern suspension yeah, a lot of people don't realize, like, cars are not built like they used to be. <laughs> no. And uh, the suspension on new cars is very tight. It's uh, very precise. Um, you can feel a lot more. 
old cars, like when you talk about 60s and 70s cars and older than that even, it is crazy how bad a wheel and tire can be balanced or bent and you can drive that thing and not know. Right. Just purely because the way the suspension set up. Suspension absorbs so much of it. Right. Whereas so modern cars, this is crucial that you get the balance done right because you're going to notice it. Yeah. And when, when a car comes from the factory, when say when this car was brand new, yeah. they would have been doing stuff like this, uh, right? Most of the time, uh, new stuff comes road force balanced to now yeah. because they don't that thing is brand new and they don't want any reason for the customer to be bringing it back when it's brand new for vibration issues right so basically the machine right now is separating the bead again yeah. and look it's spinning it grabbed hold of the tire yeah it grabbed the tire and now you're just spinning it so we can match up those two lines so we're gonna pull it back and then look at that they're lined up wow so that's all work that you'd manually have to normally do. Normally, the, the big problem is if you don't have a road force balancing machine, you won't know where to turn the tire. Right. In this particular case, it wanted it 180, but sometimes it only wants it maybe 30 degrees or 15 degrees. Right. You can't know that by looking at it by eye. A lot of places they'll turn it 180 and it fixes the problem and they kind of get lucky. Gotcha. But this one's actually going to tell you exactly where it's got to go. This is actually telling you the exactly where it needs to go. So we aired it back up. So we air it back up, we'll bead massage it again. Everything gets bead massage that comes through the shop. Right. Um, and everything gets road force checked. Even if, even if the customer's not paying to get a road force balance done, we always check the road force anyway. Right. Because if we stumble across something that's really bad, we want to let the customer know that so that they can make a decision. Maybe yeah. they want to get that wheel road force balance or maybe that tire has, road force balancing will catch a separation in the tires before it becomes a dangerous right. situation. So. Right. All right, so tire comes off, tire goes on. Slides that back on there. Clamps are back. Checks the tire pressure. And now we do it again. So now it's just gonna check the road force to see if it's where it needs to be. I already can tell by looking at it that the tire runs yeah, better than it runs before. better. It totally does run better. I can see it with my eyes too. Look at the road force value. Look at that. Five. Five. Almost nothing. Yeah. Which is and phenomenal. And before it wanted one and two i think what two it, ounces it just uh, two ounces yeah right and now so, we're gonna so now we're gonna do a, a standard balance we'll start from scratch now to right now that the road force is where it needs to be wow that's unbelievable so i mean look at that i probably would have been driving down the road i got we got these back from you had that just been a regular balance oh look at that just 75. yeah that's it that's all at once it's all now. once you know, and I'd have been going, yeah, well, they look really good, but now they're kind of lumpy and the car kind of shakes, you know? Well, on a little car like that, you may have noticed that come out. And look at this. You even paint matched weights for me. Yeah. We Those usually, weights are the same color as the inside. Holy yeah, crap, Darren. We usually do that. It's part of what we, we do here as well. I don't like wheel weights. They look ugly. So anyway, we can find a way to disguise them. This machine also allows us to put them, hide them behind the spokes on a wheel if it, if it need be. Right. Uh, so that they really are not noticeable. So we put the weights on. Now we check it one more time. And we make sure that it's good and it's happy. Okay. That's good to go. All done. And it's road force actually went down a point after it was <laughs> balanced. <laughs> that's so. phenomenal. So that's it. And look, we've got one coming off here. Darren's already got a couple more already done for me. Here they are right here. Last thing we do, so the center we caps. Painted the center caps to match so that they match 100% to the wheel. And one another thing that we do here 
is we always line every line the center cap up. Holy. The valve stem. In she goes. And you're done. Finished product. Amazing. So amazing. Well, Darren, I am blown away by how those wheels turned out. They look amazing. <laughs> they look amazing. Yeah, no, like uh, we really enjoy doing that. It's it, it's fun to watch the transition yeah. from what they were to what they are. Um, yours were a really nice shape, so I mean, it was. It's not maybe as impactful for some people, like as it could be. But we've done some stuff here just recently that was like night and day. So yeah, absolutely. Now yeah. that was just the one style, right? Like mine were aluminum, bright face, painted pockets, that sort of thing. Yeah. Now there's, you know, other cars have got. If you're just talking about, you know, regular passenger cars, day to day drivers, right? We've got stuff that's all machine the whole thing yeah. we've got stuff that's just painted right you guys can cover that yeah yeah we there's polished wheels as well that have usually clear coated and things like that right so that can um, be done yeah all that stuff can be can re be repaired most of the time right on right on and then if we get into classic cars there's a whole new host of things well, you guys yeah, can do right classic cars is a whole another level all on its own so we can redo the wheels the factory wheels but we also can custom built some stuff as well. So. I know you can widen things, right? Yeah. If you want a wider tire on it, or you want to take that center and you want to keep it, but yeah. different size barrels, things yeah. like that, right? It's very common for guys to want to, uh, the perfect example is they have a Dodge with uh, rally wheels on it that are 14 inch. Yep. 14 inch tires are getting a little bit scarce. They're not as easy to come by. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes there's brake clearance issues when guys do a disc brake conversion. So they, we have the ability to take that wheel, we can take the center out and upsize it to a 15 inch. So that's just a little more easier to get tires and fits over brakes. Or like that. moving the offset, right? Yeah, so that's we moving, can do that, moving well. that center, you know, basically hub in or out. So that say you got a new different axle going on that car, you made yeah. something customized. Yeah. Brakes are going on something like that you can still maybe get wheels under a fender skirt or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, we do that quite often too, where we get a guy that uh, gives us a call and says, oh, I changed the rear end in my car and now my tires don't fit. Right. They rub or something like that. So there's lots of cases where we're able to move the center and move the offset of the wheel to allow for, so you can keep the wheel that he likes, but still fits his car. Awesome. Well, I can't thank you enough for everything with my wheels. And <laughs> when people are watching and they say, you know what, I need something done in my car. My wheels look like crap, or, you know, I need some custom work done. Where do they start? No, well, first thing they can do is give us a shout and let us know what they want to do. And we can come up with a game plan. Awesome. Roland Steel website? Uh, yeah, rollandsteel.ca. Okay. Uh, yeah, they can give us a shout. 306-370-5567. Perfect. Or come by here on Avenue C and drop in, bring the wheels, bring the car, and come talk to Darren and the crew. You betcha. Thanks for watching. 